this week it's a Missouri gun season. We're going to be hunting with Cody and Brian Heron. That's right. This will be some action I think uh, you'll be glad you tuned in for. Well, Terry and I had spent a lot of days in a tree and in a ground blind and fighting the cold and, and trying to get, get us a deer on the ground to bring to you all to watch. And it just wasn't coming together. When we first started the rifle season, we were passing on a ton of little deer. And then when we decided we're just gonna get us some footage, we didn't see anything for a few days. And I remembered a spot that I always scored on. And I thought, you know, we haven't hunted down there in years. Nobody's even been in there to bother it. So I mentioned it to you. And you said, well, why are you telling me now? And I laughed and I said, well, we don't have a camera stand. And, and uh, you said, that ain't nothing but a thing. Well, we didn't have a camera stand in there. We hadn't been down there to really check the stand out that was in there. So we had to cut some limbs back. I had to take the camera stand up, hung it in the dark. <laughs> that morning when I mentioned that to you, you said, why aren't we going there? And I said, well, we ain't got a hung. You said, that don't take me but five minutes. And so we had a hang on stand and, and we said, you know what? And I had a ladder stand already st uh, installed down there. And I thought, well, if the straps are still good, we could use it to get up and just hang a camera stand on. He said, that won't take me five minutes. And he was right. We, we hiked in there before daylight and got up in there and hung the stand and he hopped over in it and there was a bunch of limbs and I was cutting them off and it's starting to get light. And we're thinking, boy, we tried to be quiet, but we sure was making some noise. And, and uh, I just sat down, just got turned around and sat down, was putting my gloves on. And you said the magical words. Here he comes. <laughs> I said, what? He said, here it comes, it's a buck. And I said, yeah, I said, whatever. You said, no, I'm serious. I thought you was messing well, he with th me. He thought I was pulling his leg. I, I don't ever do that out there, but. Uh... Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he'll catch me sleeping and say, big buck, I about fall out of the tree. But I wasn't believing it, but then I could hear the feed. It was coming, I could hear it coming in the leaves. And boy, I got up and turned around. It was gonna be behind me. And I got up and turned around and got ready. And you'll see the rest. Oh, did you see that? Give me some of that, baby. It was worth the work, baby. Man, holy cow. I cannot believe that. Folks, I tell you, we didn't even get to do an intro yet this morning. Oh, last minute decision, I thought, you know, there's a spot here on this farm that we haven't hunted in two years. And I've killed some awful good bucks here out of this exact stand. We didn't have a camera stand set up or anything. My partner, Terry Montgomery, he is the cat's meow. He can slap a stand up in a matter of seconds. He said, no worries, we'll go down here, we'll hang it. If you think we'll, we'll score, we'll do it. We get down here this morning, we're kind of grumbling, thinking, why didn't we do this yesterday, you know? Clanging and banging, we're being as quiet as we can. We didn't do too bad. We get our stuff hung. We're just getting settled in. And I said to Terry, we'll let things settle down a minute or two and I'll call. I didn't get the chance to. He said, no, 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 there's a deer coming right now. I was like, what? And I got up and I could hear it trotting. The squirrels was barking. He said, it's a buck. He said, I think it's a shooter. I like to stroke out. You know how long I waited to hear that. This has been a tough season. I don't even know how good he is. He said he's a shooter. I trust him. I pulled a hammer on him. Looked like a decent buck. We'll know more when we get there. Wow, now that's hunting. Hunt all week like this and all of a sudden, just a matter of minutes. We wasn't here 10 minutes. On. Unbelievable, unbelievable, baby. <laughs> you believe that, son? I cannot believe how that happened. And what was he? 30 yards? 
He was Paul Rains. Paul Rains. He still run a little clip. I can't believe it. They don't run like that with their short bag, but but he's down. I heard him. I heard him take the old dirt nap over there, baby. Oh, son, I'm so happy I can just climb up there and I hug you, but I don't think I'd stay on a hold both of us. <laughs> son, we might ought to settle down. It's early. I'll hand you my rifle, son. We'll just get another. And... <laughs> I told you. I just, there's something about this spot. Wow. How about that, baby? I can't believe that just happened. Outdoor vigilantes, baby. Outdoor vigilantes. We just put it on a Missouri buck right there, baby. We just put it on him. Vigilante style. Whew, wow. There is something new in the air. The Scud in-flight scent dispenser is designed to help you create a scent trail for the game of your choice without ever leaving your position. The Scud works with any and all of your favorite scents and lures. Just load it up and you are ready to go. The Scud leaves a vapor scent trail back to your position up to 100 yards away. Every situation may not call for a Scud, but sooner or later, you will wish you had one. The Scud in-flight scent dispenser, online at scudshooter.com. To get where you want to be in life, as a man, as a dad, as a hunter, you will carry some heavy loads, and through them we realize that virtues like strength and reliability matter most. From ourselves and our gear. Ultimately what matters is not the weight of the load, but how we carry it. Alps Outdoors. Final step cover scent. The only one on the market that I know of that's 100% all natural. Here in Missouri, we like the cedar scent. They got several scents to pick from. If you like to hunt, trap, you name it, this is the stuff to have. When we run trap lines, we spray everything down with this. It smells just like a cedar. It's unbelievable, 100% natural. When we go to the tree stand, we spray it on. We spray it on when we get in the tree. It's like we were never there. We get ground blinds. We spray it on the blinds before we go in. It's like we were never there. This stuff is absolutely amazing. Final step cover scent. 100% all natural. If you want to bring home bone like this, you better make final step your last step in your scent elimination system. Well, we started to uh, stay in a stand, see if we'd get Montgomery one, but flipping coyotes already trying to get my deer. I had to tear my rifle. He put the herd on one of them down there. We're not sure if he hit it or not. He had to shoot through a lot of brush, but we thought it was another deer, but it wasn't. It was a cow. It went right straight to my buck. So we've elected to go ahead and go get him right quick, and, and uh, we'll see how good he is. We hadn't seen a good deer in so long. It might have looked a little better than it actually was. Uh, well, might have been a little bit of grass shrinkage, uh, but you know, your last day, and I was wanting to put some meat in the freezer, so as our old uh, saying goes, when we look at somebody's deer in the back of the truck, you automatically know what they think when you say, what do you think about my buck? They go, well, it'd be good eating. You, you automatically know what they're thinking, and that's what he was, he was good eating, but you know, the, it wasn't that light, and, and he comes out, and he looks up, and he spots us, he pegged us. And I had to make that decision like that. And I just saw he was at least even with his ears, and I touched it off. So, uh, well, he, he was one of the best ones that we had seen <laughs> yeah. that year up to that point. We so were, it was just it was a tough season that year. We had it. We had a dry run that year for sure. But I made a good shot on him. And uh, then what happened? You remember the coyote? Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> There, there was a coyote. I don't know if we got the footage on that or not, but there was a it there was a coyote that came in there. Right after I'd shot yeah. it, I'd shot it, and we thought we heard a deer coming down the draw. So he hands me the camera, and I hand him the rifle. And just as we're doing the switch, he says, "There's one coming up the draw over here." He goes, "It's a damn lame coyote." And this coyote runs right up and starts chomping on my deer. Right, right. I mean, just like that. And I'm trying to get the camera on the deer, I wasn't sure where it fell, I just heard it pile up, and Terry cracks off around. I think it was deliberate, folks, because I made a good shot, and when we get over there, there's no coyote hair, but my buck is now gut shot with a 270 Winchester short magnet, compliments of my old buddy T. 
I know that's on purpose. <laughs> there probably wasn't even no coyote. I never did see no coyote. <laughs> Good times. He's not that 200 incher, but I'll take him. We've hunted hard, and this is going to be my last day of hunting. It happened so fast, I couldn't, I really couldn't tell. I just knew he was eating with his ears, and big body deer. And it was time to get one down. Come in this morning, set that set up there. And I, I think he thought we was a buck up there. We tore some limbs off and stuff. And, I think he's coming to investigate. And little did he know. That old cow looks like he nabbed him right here on the back of the head, and I ain't kidding you. We were gonna wait and we had another one right after we shot this one crossed right down here. I had to tear the rifle, took the camera, but we couldn't get him to come in. We're positive it was a good buck too, but May have been better than this one, probably was. But he eased on up through here. Then a coyote come out and come straight to this deer. No Terry shot at him, we're gonna see if he got him or not. Well, that's what it's all about right there, guys. Hard work, we've hunted hard for a week. Hunted hard for a week and finally got us an eight pointer. There is something new in the air. The Scud in-flight scent dispenser is designed to help you create a scent trail for the game of your choice without ever leaving your position. The Scud works with any and all of your favorite scents and lures. Just load it up and you are ready to go. The Scud leaves a vapor scent trail back to your position up to 100 yards away. Every situation may not call for a Scud, but sooner or later, you will wish you had one. The Scud in-flight scent dispenser, online at scudshooter.com. I started this mineral lick about a year and a half ago with just OV mineral and just starting this out in the middle of a pasture where I know big bucks frequent the does cross here at the natural crossing. They come out here, they're not scared. Uh, it's kind of a safe area for them. They've got CRP all around them. And as you can see with this mineral site, how much this has helped the deer, but not only helped me locate where the deer are coming from, where they're going to, and that's only going to equal success in the future. Absolutely. Now this is an amazing mineral site. It's it's dug out three foot by six foot deep, and you know I'm looking at this thinking, how do I get one like that? You know, so if any of you guys want to know how to do this, how did you start this? Before? Well, I got with our uh, our host Cody Lucas. He created this mineral with uh, not just killing in mind, but actually the health of the herd. He wanted something that was going to help all aspects of hunting. So he gave me this. He said, try this out. This is my own mixture. It's in the testing phase. So, well, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'll, gi I'll give it a try. And here we are a year later. This is going to be our third or fourth application in this hole. And a year and a half later, we have this big of a hole. 
we have numerous pictures of big bucks, does, fawns. Every deer in the area is coming to this lake. And this is an exciting time of the year because this is when we really get to see these bucks. They love coming to these licks, especially early. You know, before September, they'll just come in there and nail it, especially with their, their antlers growing. And you'll see them in velvet and get all these velvet picks, these awesome bucks. And it's important to have this out all year round as well. To get where you want to be in life, as a man, as a dad, as a hunter, you will carry some heavy loads, and through them we realize that virtues like strength and reliability matter most. From ourselves and our gear. Ultimately what matters is not the weight of the load, but how we carry it. Alps Outdoors. Well, on this hunt, we're up in northern Missouri with Brian Heron on a farm that he's got a lease with some friends of his. And this farm is known, it's infamous, for opening day buck kills, good bucks. Son, is there a farm in northern Missouri that's not? Obviously not the ones Brian Heron's hunting. <laughs> we're going to have to sit him down and have a little talk with him. We're going to have to get us our uh, our pass, our backstage yeah. meet greet or something yeah. for this farm, because this farm is full of big bucks. Welcome back, folks. <laughs> Pretty excited to be out here. It's opening day of rifle season. This is the same spot I saw the drop time buck. And I'm hoping he comes out when I got my gun in my hand, but there's several nice bucks in this area. We've got trail cam pictures of some nice bucks. And uh, I think my chances are pretty good this morning. They like to run this little area. It's really pretty down here. Uh, we're hoping that this is gonna be a successful morning. Perfect weather. Um, a little bit overcast. It's probably 40 degrees. Just perfect for opening day rifle season. Been seeing a lot of rut activity already. Um, this morning I saw a buck chasing a doe. Got some pretty good footage of him. Uh, he wasn't quite big enough to shoot, but I uh, really like to get a buck down on the ground. I've been hunting hard. I've <clears throat> been, uh, been bow hunting for about nine days straight, so Hopefully we'll get one down with a rifle. I'm not going to be too picky. I want to. I want to get a nice buck down. So. Well, now Brian's up in the stand and he hasn't been there no time. And here comes the doe up the draw and he's watching this doe slip in, just knowing Mr. Big's going to be with her. After this doe works her way through, it's not long and he hears something and he looks and here comes a few more does coming down the draw that he's, he's watching and behind him is a nice little eight point buck. Brian watches this eight point chasing these does around for a while and he decides that it's not quite what he's he's gonna shoot on opening day there in northern Missouri because he knows there's some some Mr. Biggs on this farm. Just had a doe run through here, bleating <clears throat> really loud. And uh, I don't know if she's being chased or not, but uh, she just ran through here, kind of come off this hill and run down through here. Hopefully a big buck's right behind her. Oh. Here comes a deer. Here well, it deer. winds up being a good good choice because I tell you, it's not long and where that little eight pointer had come, straight where he had come down to track them does, here come the dandy. Here come one of the gym dandies of the farm trailing down through there, gonna try to play catch up to him and them does. Well, now Brian sees this buck coming in. He starts getting a little excited. This boy gets shook now. He'll even, even on camera, you can see them hands. And uh, I ain't kidding you, I do too. It's uh, like somebody, I was gonna say, it's like somebody else I know. Even, sometimes even a slick head, I got a bow in my hand, I get a little shook. And 
the day I quit getting shook is the day I'll quit hunting, I can tell you. But if, if you're not getting shook, you're not having fun. I'm telling you right now. But Brian gets a little amped up, and you'll see why. This winds up being a nice 10 point. He comes trotting right down there just as pretty, just as if he read the script for Brian, and you're going to see what happens now. Baby, down, opening morning, got a buck down. Whew. This is an awesome spot. This is the same spot I saw the drop tine. That was a nice buck. <clears throat> Good maturity here. Put him down, man. He's. Whew. This farm has been great for opening mornings. I had a pretty nice 10 pointer one year come in on me. Eight o'clock opening morning. This morning I've seen probably 20 deer already. A couple of bucks chasing. This buck showed up out of nowhere. Killer. Whew. Still shaking. Whew. I'd also like to thank uh, Alps Outdoors. They have set us up with these packs that I am able to fit all of my hunting gear in. Thank you, Ops Outdoors. I got everything in here that I want. Um, they're big bags. They've got big to small, and they're very reasonable. They're awesome bags, so check them out today. Thanks, Alps. You guys ready to get my buck? Let's get down. When O'Brien puts one on this buck, and I mean, he puts the first shot right where it counts, but just for good measures, that big buck tore out of there, and he knows how they can be. Sometimes they'll run a long way, so he smokes another one at him real quick, and the buck goes just out of camera sight there into the brush, and he piles up. Wasn't much of a track job. Son, if they're still on their feet, let her eat. <laughs> let it eat and plug the meat, huh? <laughs> he does it. He puts it on him. Them Heron boys, they're starting to make a habit of that. Yeah. I'd hate to buy the ammo for them boys. <laughs> folks behind me is where I had my setup and this is where that buck came through put a good shot on him he's down let's go take a look at him there's some blood right there he should be right up in here somewhere some pretty thick stuff so I'm gonna head in and check it out well you know he gets down and he goes out and, and it's not much of a track job Ryan walks down through there and sees that buck and I think by his reaction the buck was a little better than what he thought when he shot it. I, I think it happened so quick. I think Brian was pretty pleased with what he'd done and, and once again I failed to mention he's videoing himself. He does this quite often and he's getting really good at it but he's the cameraman for himself and everything and it turned out to be real, a real good hunt. And that's hard to do. It is tough. I'm not gonna lie there's been times I haven't even went if I knew I had to video myself. It gets to be tough. There's blood at this log. It's got to be in here somewhere. A little bit of blood back. Oh wait, there's blood back here. Let me turn. Oh, well, there he is, right there. Oh, where's his head? <laughs> Check this out. I can't even see his head. Let's get him out of there. Well, folks, here he is. I dug him out of the brush. <coughs> he fell into that brush. He's a he's a nice buck. He's a ten pointer. Well, kind of nine with a little nub there, but he's pretty dear. He's a good three and a half year old. Uh, got some really nice bucks on this farm. I've had a heck of a year. This is a this is a great way to accent it with a nice buck on the ground with a gun. And uh, hopefully there's another one coming with a bow this year. We're going to do some late season hunting up here. It's an awesome spot. Lots of nice bugs. Uh, stay tuned, folks.
it's going to be a good year. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's show, hunting here in Missouri during the rifle season. There's not nothing quite like it. You know, we do the archery hunting, and then we're, we're tired of deer coming in at 80 yards. And it's time to get the gun down and make it happen. Reach out there and touch them a little bit. We educate them then, and we really enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did bringing it to you. Make sure and tune in and check us out next week. We're going to have a lot more action for you folks. In the meantime, while you're waiting, check us out at www.outdoorvigilantes.com. And give us a like on Facebook. Go check us out. We'll see you next week. Brink with high fives, it's a love.